This is nothing new if you have been a part of this community in the last 20 years. The Traverse is a big twist to the dip portion of this event. I feel really good about that one. It was a fun test. I thought it was really great. I thought it was a classic, classic CrossFit test. Not only in the sense that parallel bars have been around the CrossFit community since its beginnings, but I mean, it's a very classic old school benchmark workout just with something that hadn't shown up in competition that way before. I think some people look at this and they're like, oh man, it's so new. And it's like, no, actually it's just really old and you haven't seen it yet. <laughs> If we think about like the history of CrossFit and the history of, of the games as one subset of the expression of CrossFit, you start to see this narrowing. CrossFit, the sport as a subset of CrossFit, the activity, necessarily or not, had kind of narrowed the application of what these certain gymnastics tools are used for. I think by extension, you start to see the number of pieces of equipment that, that people play around with starts to be limited in certain ways too because they think all right this isn't going to show up in competition or it hasn't shown up historically in competition therefore i don't need to engage with it in my training i don't think that's the name of the game you know and if you look back at the early days of crossfit you go to greg's original gym he had a pair of parallel bars athletes were on them all the time you know they were practicing these supports they were practicing basic gymnastics movements and the goal wasn't so that they could do that specific gymnastics movement. The goal was there's a ton of reward for agility, accuracy, coordination, balance that will therefore transfer over into other things that you pursue that make the thing worth doing. And so if you go back to the affiliate, you look at the way that athletes are, and I'm talking everyday athletes, are asked to engage with CrossFit. You know, they're gonna get exposed to kettlebells, they're gonna get exposed to, to rings, they're gonna get exposed to things that are so far out of the realm of what they've done in their normal life that it has this really broadening quality to it. And you don't wanna lose that. You don't, you don't want that to be just the domain of the beginner or the novice athlete. Like that has to be continued for, for those at the highest level. The parallel bars that we tested on at Rogue, we borrowed uh, from I believe a local college and there were this beautiful competition set really beefy um, really nice they're also really long I think they might have been 12 footers and so that was the testing information that we had was this really long traverse back and forth oh six five born to be a gymnast <laughs> The dips have to be preceded by a walk, so if you fail on like two of three, you got to go back to the beginning of the walk, walk, get your last one. Dips, and I think we're going to have you do the dips, and I want to experiment with just traversing instead of dips. On oh, the parallel just going across. Yeah, okay. so not 21 reps, that's too many, Right. Yeah. but maybe cut it by thirds, so maybe seven, five, three. Okay, I want to play with that. Okay, yeah. Here we go. Three, two, one, go. There's not enough room for the both of us. Look, if you ever call me, call me number one. Overall, I thought the test came off great. Yeah, it did what it was supposed to do. You know, the barbell wasn't the make or break for a lot of these athletes. They, they could race on that element of it, and then they had to know their ability on the parallel bars and know that ability with something that they hadn't had a chance to practice ahead of time. Not being able to practice something ahead of time is a staple of the CrossFit Games. There's been plenty of events in the past where athletes show up to the field and the first time they get to do the thing is when they put their hands on it in competition. That's nothing new. You have to be selective about when you choose to do that. You know, there's a time to kind of test that adaptability and then there's a time to allow people a little bit of practice. For something that's relatively low skill and you're not really sure how it's going to interfere with the other elements, like a parallel traverse, it's appropriate to just have them do it on the field. Very impressive. You see how quickly you picked up those skills? After like two sets, I was like, hey, almost kicked like you're running. And it ended up helping a lot. The thing that you figured out, the athletes got to figure out on that is, Less steps matters, right? Yeah. So if you're here, oh yeah, I was like trying to go like that. Yeah. What, what do you think the seven five three? Because I know you, you were talking maybe yeah. five three one. 
It actually, it actually was fine. Okay. Because it's going to be a separator. It's going to be a good separator yep. for those who can, you know, hold something like this. Yep. You know, because you got to keep agility, accuracy, balance, coordination. Exactly. You got to keep those in there somehow. Yep. You take away the yep. handstand walk, stuff like that. Something yep. like this, I think, is genius. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. It, the, there's a kind of Far East philosophy that you know things become perfect not when you are done adding everything you need to them, but when you have carved away everything that is unnecessary. And so that's what I was just talking to Boz about. Some of these workouts are like that, where you don't need to add more to them. They're already what they need to be without any additional stuff. Chip it down. You got to carve away all, all the superfluous pieces until you get to the essence of what the workout's mes meant to test, and then we throw that out there and let the, the athletes crush it. When we arrived on site, the company we were working with to source the parallel bars for the games, they had different models, and we were surprised that they were a lot shorter. The question was, okay, is it going to be enough? Is the traverse going to be long enough based on the fact that we, we had this longer test at Rogue, that's all the information we had on it, now we've got the shorter equipment once we arrive on site, what's that going to do to it? But I think it worked out, and I think it was enough. The, the utility of the testing week is that we get an opportunity to try to run some of these systems in a much more reduced capacity and you identify so many places where your plan that you had to that point is not adequate and it needs refinement. And so right out the gate, you step away from that week with all of these things. You're like, all right, we have identified a bunch of different areas where we're going to have to figure some more things out. And that's huge to be able to do that ahead of time. Uh, in real time, uh, with athletes, seeing what the effect is, seeing what it's like to actually move this gear uh, on and off the field, extrapolating that and figuring, okay, what's that going to look like with a full field of athletes? What's that going to look like when we have a TV transition that gives us 120 seconds to reset for the next heat? You know, you start to troubleshoot a lot of that early. It was really important that we did the test true to the size of the field in that environment so that you could account for the exact transitions that were going to happen on the field uh, and see what that looked like. I guess there's details that just come out as things emerge and you can't always dictate everything. And you do have to roll with the punches even as you're organizing an event. You can get close on a spreadsheet and in a, in a document, but until you start to see it happen in real time with real flesh and blood objects and people, you can't take it as far as it needs to be. There's just no way. Benchmarks have a lot of utility because they allow you to see how you as an athlete or an individual have progressed. And if you take that and kind of step backwards, you can also apply that broadly to the general level of CrossFit athlete. For example, if you took one of the first events that was programmed at the 2007 games and you give it to the highest level of athlete in 2022 or 2023 coming up, they're going to blow the doors off of it and you can extrapolate kind of where the general level of competitor is now versus back then. So it's a really, really useful way to get a sense a little bit more objectively of, of where individuals are, where the sport is, where the field is. Benchmarks are important at the games level as well because they give a sense of relatability back to the average person. You know, it's really unique to the sport of CrossFit is that most people watching it do it in some capacity. They go to the gym, they do these workouts, they're familiar with the movements, they know what it feels like to be in the middle of one of these just like brutal types of efforts. There's a visceral feeling to it and that's heightened even further if you take a benchmark into consideration because it's probably true that a lot of them have done Elizabeth in some way at some point. Maybe not with the same weight, maybe not with the same time, you know, certainly not with that kind of competitive pressure, but I know what it feels like to be in that set of 15 looking at the bar and saying, how many more? And the audience does too. So bringing that to the big stage, it shows that, hey man, We've all been there, and this is a sport that truly is participatory. And it's not just the high-level athletes that get to reap the benefits from it.